Hey y'all, we're Jimmy and Lacey with Finest Camping. Today we are back with you for episode four of our new series, RV Freedom, Your Guide to the Open Road. In this episode four, what she just <laughs> said, is RV accessories. These are going to be RV accessories that we think you must have, and there's some RV accessories that we think you might, might want to have. Needs and wants. And some of these kind of overlap. So we have quite the list we're trying to go through. I've got it, I was going to say written down, but typed out here because there's no way I'm going to remember it all off the top of my head. So pardon me as I <laughs> glance back and forth. Um, Just remember, these are things that we think you need. Once again, not professionals. We don't know everything. We don't know how you live compared to how we live. So these are just things that we've kind of come together on agreement on what we think would be a great starter thing for you to have. Right. So number one is only going to apply to fifth wheel people. So if your new RV that you've picked out, purchased, walked through, and now you're ready to make sure you're set up and ready to go is a fifth wheel. Well, which, which you saw in our last video was the RV walkthrough. So we showed you everything you needed to do and learn to do that walkthrough, and now you have your fifth wheel. And by the way, this is episode four. So if you haven't tuned in for any of the previous episodes, Three, two, or one, <laughs> feel free to go back and, and view those. This guy will put a link somewhere. Um, directing you to those because if you're new to the RV world and you're looking to purchase an RV and get out there, this series is designed as a step-by-step -step to get you there. So jumping in on episode four may not be the place you want to be, or maybe you already have your RV. So that's why you're jumping in here. But either way, feel free to go back and check out the, the previous episodes where we broke it down from the beginning to this point. So Back to the lube plate. Back to the fifth wheel, a lube plate. So what that means is if you see like a fifth wheel on a tractor trailer and it's just got these gobs of grease on it. That, I used to do that with the tractor trailers, yeah, but the nice pretty designs You don't on the want to wheel. touch because it's greasy and it's dirty and it, everything sticks to it. And then every time you bump into your pin box, you're going to hit it and have it on your shirt. The way to avoid that is a lube plate. It looks kind of like a big paper plate with a hole in it, and it just sticks up onto the bottom of your king pen, and it stays there. You don't you don't have to fool with it. You put it on there once until it starts wearing out, and then you can replace it, and it replaces the need to have to grease that and have it nasty. dirty and nasty all the time. So only for your fifth wheel people, but if you have a fifth wheel, that's something you're going to want to buy, and that... They're under twenty bucks. Maybe they come in a six, eight, and an eight, six inch and an eight inch. We just buy the eight inch just to make it safe. Right. So, um, something else you're gonna want. This is a safety thing, and there's we're probably gonna stir up a bag on on a few of these things. <laughs> we're probably gonna stir up some controversy, but again, these are things we think you need, and we don't leave home without. So, a tire pressure monitoring system, which is TPMS. Most of us have gone grown used to having them on our vehicles, right? So your car or truck probably has a TPMS on it that alerts you if your tire pressure is low or high or if, I don't know, do the ones in your car tell you if your tire is getting hot? Ours doesn't. Ours just has, ours the, just has the, um, the PSI on it. The TPMS for the, for the trailers will tell you that. So just think of that as an extension. And I will also say like our truck came with... TPMS that we could have installed on the trailer tires. Um, also, a lot of the campers nowadays are coming with them already installed, and they come with the little monitor that you put somewhere in, in the cab of your truck. So, it's going to tell you if your tire pressure is too low, if it's too high, if it's getting hot, because all of those could indicate a problem that you need to address. So, we don't drive without a TPMS. Plenty of people out there that are going to say you don't have to have that. Just our personal opinion, and it has saved us on numerous. We occasions. will go deeper and involved in a lot of these as the as the series as the episodes go through. Um, we'll tell you why we think you need them, how we've used them, and all that kind of stuff. But we just think you need to have a TPMS. And a lot of manufacturers now are are having them they when come, you buy the yeah, when you purchase the it. camper. But if you buy a used one, you might want to buy one. Um, and, and there's different types of those. So we, again, something we can get into later, but there's screw on and there's ones that mount actually inside on the rim. Correct. Um, something else you're going to want while we're kind of on that tire piece is 
tools in your truck Absolutely. in case you do have a flat. Now, your trailer is prob probably, maybe, going to come with the four-way or whatever you need to get the tire off. Um, it may even come with some sort of jack, depending on your trailer. You may can even use your leveling system. <sighs> Again, that's a mixed bag of who we're going to offend First with of all, that. most RVs are not going to come with the four-way. They're going to be in your truck. Some of those come inside your truck to break the okay. lugs. But most of the RVs, they just have the little tool to bring it up and down. They don't really have the tool to change it. Which is not going to be fun on the side of the road. So basically what you want to do, and this is where we've learned many, many times, once you get that camper, you get it home, test it. See if what you have, because we... In the driveway, where we, there's not cars going by you at 70, 80 miles an hour. When we first started it, we had to use our bottle jack that was in our truck to try to lift it up. Well, the axles and stuff on the campers were a little bit higher up, and by the time I got it to where it needed to go, the, we the, rim, the tire wasn't off the ground, so we had to bring it back down, put a piece of block underneath it, crank it back up, and we didn't get it far, bring it back down... Bottom line is you want to have what you need to change that tire on the road safely. And doing all that up and down, the place to test that is not on, on the side, side of the, the road. highway. Especially the driver's side with your feet hanging out in the traffic yeah. because so, <laughs> the traffic is not going to move over no, for you. I'm even tell you though that it's right the now. law, they're not going to. So recommendation, get your tools together that you think you're going to want to have with you to do something like change tire on the side of the road on your trailer and then do a test run in your driveway. Just make sure that the jack you have is going to get it up high enough that the tools you have are going to be, it's going to be easy enough for you to do on the side of the road without running to the garage and grabbing an impact or something like that because you're not going to have that option when you're on the side of the road. So our recommendation <laughs> is we do carry a floor jack with us um, that you can lift up and get the whole tire off right. the ground. We do carry a, a impact uh, 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 it's a battery operated, but it's the impact. Yeah, the right? impact, 20 volt. You can run them off pretty quick. Um, run them back on. We do have a, um, uh, not a breaker bar, but a... Torque wrench. Torque wrench. We can torque our, our lug nuts down so we, we know where they need to go. So carry everything you need. Test it. Do a test run in your driveway. Make sure you can pull that wheel off fast. Put that wheel back on. Tighten it back up. Get off the road if you have to. Get to the next exit, tighten everything down if you really, really need to, and then be back on your road. But make sure you have everything. Side note, if you're going to use that battery-operated impact, you're going to need to make sure that your batteries are charged um, before you leave. So that's something to keep in mind that he keeps an eye on for us. And you're probably going to want some gloves. And by gloves, I mean like a nice set of leather or leather utility gloves. gloves um, because that tire could be hot pavement could be hot everything could be hot you could you know scratch your hands up whatever when you run that so, tire flat it's steaming a nice so. a nice pair of gloves would be nice for you know that type of situation now now that we're gonna we're, we're not gonna have to change a tire hopefully on the way there but when we get to the campsite the first thing you're going to want to do is level and before you jump the gun and say well i have automatic levelers on my camper or maybe you don't and you have um do you call them when they're not levelers, stabilizer, stabilizer jacks. jacks? You're going to need to be somewhat level side to side before you start the process. And this is where we get into another more controversy. Yes. I didn't even realize that this video was going to be so controversial. Um, some people will tell you that it's perfectly fine to run your levelers and maybe they raise the side of the camper up because you were unlevel to start with and now your wheels are not touching the ground. They're not coming in contact this with anything. This is still They're another video too. Hanging there. So without getting into too much controversy there, we choose to not do that. We've been told by several people, engineering type people. In the that, RV industry, not just right, RVers. Right, right. That you, you don't want to do that. Okay, so we choose not to. But if you don't have automatic levelers, that's not going to be an option anyway because your stabilizer jacks are just once you get level to keep you sturdy. So we recommend when you get there, you're going to want to see if, you know, maybe the driver's side is low. You need to raise that up a little bit. You're going to need some type of device to do that. Levelers is the answer. <laughs> that was a long circle to levelers. You need levelers. That's the fact. 100%. You will need something. The type of levelers you get 
you need levelers. There are levelers that are square blocks. I think they're maybe 12 inches. They stack together like Legos. They come in a set of, I think, 10, and they're relatively inexpensive. The trick with them is you have to figure out how many you need to get that side up to where you're somewhat Usually leveled. it was one block for one inch. And then, then you level front to back. We bought them and we played the Lego game many times before finally giving in and spending the extra money to invest in some Anderson levelers. And we've had these for our work trailers and for our trailers here. Um, they're like a wedge, so you could either back or pull on that side you needed to raise. And gradually you'd be going up, and when you get to where you need to be that's your level, you can stop. And then you put a uh, chalk underneath that, and that keeps you level. So... You, you gotta need, need levelers. levelers. They can be the cheaper ones, which are the squares, or you can spend a little more and get the Anderson levelers. So a need, but a need and want within one field. All so. of these things we're recommending to you, we will put in the description down the bottom. Uh, we do have an Amazon store for a newbie section, so everything right. that we talk about will be here. And if for some reason they're not on Amazon, we will send and give you a link to where to get these. So you don't have to be... Trying to remember all this stuff, we will have a spot for you to go right there. Absolutely, too. absolutely. Um, those are even in a campground, not just like when you're boondocking. You're gonna, you, you need to be level. Um, so keep those in mind. If you have a travel trailer, you also may want, and they make different things. Anderson makes them, but you can use those blocks to put under your um, the tongue, the tongue, because you may need to. You're gonna need to raise or lower that to get level front to back once you're level side to side. Let's those say, are those are definitely needs. They're not wants, guys. Because yeah, no, no, when no. you get to some campgrounds, you're going to need to be especially level. if you're out in the mountain somewhere. Even if you're not in the mountain, there 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 is campgrounds that are not level 100. percent We've and, been in parking lots at yes. Harvest Host that were not level. But so that's even a, that's on the a asphalt, need. don't leave without something. levelers are a need. Which type you get could be a need or a want. And we've seen people carry two by sixes, so you can carry that yeah, in the can, back of your truck. You can if that's carry what you blocks want. of wood if that makes you happy. Whatever you need, you're just going to need a way to get up off the ground on one side or the other in case you're in an unlevel situation. Once you've gotten level and you've unhooked from your truck. This is, this is kind of, it's a need in some situations, a want in some. You're going to want or need a lock for your trailer. So our fifth wheel lock is a thing that slides over the kingpin and locks in with a key so that nobody else could connect to it. Unless Why, why do I need a it. lock if I'm going to be camping so, in a campground? In a campground, maybe not so much. But like but. if you're boondocking somewhere and you want to go actually sightsee, and you're going to leave your camper there unattended, where somebody else could come along and hook up and pull it off. Or if you're parked in like a Cabela's, we parked at a Cabela's parking lot the other night and then we ran to grab groceries and some dinner and we had to leave it sitting there. Now I'd like to think that somebody's not going to hook up and pull off with it. However, I've even heard stories. We met some folks that were in a campground and the lady was in her camper with their slides out and the husband had left to go do something and she felt the camper moving, and she went out, and this guy's trying to hook up to their fifth wheel to, to drive off with it. And the slides were out. So, like, it can happen even in a campground. So they make a lock. They're relatively inexpensive. I'm going to say $30 or less, maybe $50 or less. There's all different types. They also make them for travel trailers that slides up in where your the ball trailer ball would go, you know, and, and locks down so that nobody can hook up to that. So... I hope you're not camping in those campgrounds that that could well, happen. The campground but that happened that was, was not a really a, nice yeah, that campground. That wasn't a bad campground. It was a resort. So that has a, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but especially if you're off somewhere where nobody's going to be around to keep an eye on things or to notice if somebody's trying to steal your RV. Nothing like coming back to the campground. You're going to want to protect your investment, right? You've spent all the money. And even if it's insured, do you want to go through that process where you have to, you know, do the police report and call the insurance company? I don't want to. So for 30, 30 to 50 bucks, I'd say invest in a lock. Um, uh, once you're locked, like we're off the truck and it's locked, it's time to hook up to the utility. Now, this is next week's video, too, on how we suggest. Yeah, we're going to go through the whole the unhook connect to everything we'll go through all the processes next week this is just telling you what we think you need right before, this is before, getting before you, the you tools. leave before you leave that rv dealership that you just did you walk through they will they also sell a lot of these things so you can buy from your dealership sure or if you'd rather go home and, and a lot of dealerships 
after you purchase something, we'll give you a 10, 15, 20% discount right. into the to store. To purchase there at the store. So, so um, you know, like if you're wanting to go grab the things, this is going to tell you the things you need to grab. And then next week we'll talk about how to attach them all and how to use them all. Um, so you're going to need to, well, you're going to need to plug into power. That's cool, right? You just, if it's a 50 amp site, you, you plug into the 50 amp, if you're 50 amp camper, you plug into the 50 amp receptacle on the box, you flip it on and you're good to go. But you want to be protected. Yeah. So there's a couple things there. Number one, you want to be protected. The electrical connections at campgrounds are not always created equal. <laughs> not at all. And they're not always good. Especially if you go to some old campgrounds. Well, some of them, it's, some of them, it's aged. Some of it's, you know, somebody was digging and they nicked a wire or something. Or what I've seen a lot of is when you guys, and if you guys can help us with this, when you go to the campground and you pull out your plug, you pull your surge protector, you pull something out of the, the 50 amp, you just yank it and shake it up and down and yank it. If you put your hand up against it and you pull it out, that helps save that plug. Because once that plug gets loose, it gets wobbly. that's where some of the bigger issues go and you have they have to come back and replace it. Well, that and plug. if you pull it, you never know what on the back side of that is is shaking loose or breaking loose so sometimes it'll be like the ground is messed up you're going to want a surge protector that's the end that's the end of the sentence yes. you're going to want a surge protector now there's options with surge protectors there are surge protectors that you if you're handy or if you have a dealer you like you can hardwire into your rv so you never really have to fool with it then there's surge protectors that you're literally going to plug in to the pedestal you're going to wait for it to give you the light that says you're good to go, and then you're going to plug your RV And I will tell you, you'll that. be surprised how many campgrounds Have you go problems. to that it'll say ground or shorted or or open fault open or fault. something. There's We were we were at the Tampa show just a couple weeks, a month ago, and, and there was six or seven plugs there. It took me five, four times to find a plug that my surge protector said, Okay. I feel safe enough for you to turn on now. Okay, you're so good. there, there's a lot of plugs, a lot of lot of power outlets out there that are not good, guys. So don't just go. We're here and plug in and, and have a nice and, and hope well, for the best. And I think there's also varying opinions on whether or not you do an inline or an external. So I like inlines because you don't have to worry about it. A lot of guys will use as externals, but once again, they're stealing your camper. Sometimes we've heard people steal surge protectors, so they put a lock on the surge protector. Yeah, so protector a lot of too, the surge so. protectors do come with, or you can buy a little lock so that they can't steal that. But the problem with the inline is you cut your main 50 amp, 30 amp cord, or whatever it is, you plug it in this end, you plug it in this end. If for some reason you hit a sour or a surge or something happens to that, it's kind of think about your surge protector at your house. You used to put your computers and stuff in. If that surge protector takes a hit and it does its job, you're done. It, right. You so have now, to go get a new surge protector and put those wires back in. So now you get, if it's in the bay or in somewhere, you got to pull everything out of it and re-hardwire everything back in. If it's just one to plug on to the side of the, side of the pedestal, you just run back to your local uh, camp store or Amazon, or Amazon order one overnight or one. and have it. Um, so, so we've had both. We currently have an external, um, but we had an internal before. And internal is so nicer. You that's going to be that's going to be a personal preference because do you want to run the risk of if the internal one goes bad, you're down until you can get a new one, or are you comfortable with that risk? You don't have to, want to have to worry about somebody stealing it from outside. So need, and again, you don't have to have it. Your RV will work without so it. So for you guys, until that, it doesn't. So for some of you guys that are seasoned campers that are watching this, do you recommend? the inline or do you recommend just to plug it in and lock it up so and why please tell us but why. once you finally get there you may have a big 50 amp camper like we have and you have to step it down to 30 amp because two reasons either the campground only has 30 amp where you're going or maybe the 50 amp breaker is bad and you have to go to that 30 or maybe amp. it's a campground that has 30 and 50 but all the 50s are full and your choice is either a 30 or you can't so stay. now how do i how do i hook up to that with this big 50 amp plug so they make adapters kind of like you know extension cords so to speak but most of them are short like i don't know 12 to 18 inches and it'll have a 50 amp plug on one side and a 30 amp on the other so you can plug your 50 amp cord into it and then you can plug the other end into the 30 amp service now, that's great because now you still have power, right? Mm. But what you need to keep in mind is you only have 30 amps. So you're not going to be able to run all the things at the same time that you can run on your 50 amp service because you're not going to have 
enough juice so to do that. You're going to overheat something. I'm not going to be able to run all three of those. No, ACs. you're not going to run all three of those ACs. So that's something to keep I think in it's mind. Time to move. I want to backspace to the surge protector for just a second because I did say you don't have to have a surge protector and you don't. But again, it's a protection on the investment you've made. So you don't... We, you just bought your new RV. We, right. So we think it's a need because they're not cheap, right? So they are a couple hundred dollars. And so I just wanted to emphasize, you can look at it and say, well, we don't have to have it. It'll work without it. And it will. But if you get somewhere where the power is no good and you have a surge, it can cause a fire or it could dramatically affect the electrical in your coach and then it's going to cost you a lot of money or if it was a fire it could cost you your whole just remember, coach and you've already made that investment so it's a protection for your just investment. remember you bought that brand new three thousand dollar computer and you just plug you it into plug it you in. just plug it into your wall no, but you're you, going to plug it into you a plug surge it in protector. that surge protector it's so. the same thing and this is a much bigger investment than your computer so think of it the same way um, the dog bones, you know, the same thing. So that's what those adapters are typically called. If you hear somebody say a dog bone. And they make them 50 to 30, 30 to 20. So, like, they step down. So also, if you're somebody that's going to maybe mooch dock in a friend's driveway or family member's driveway, and you just want to be able to plug in enough to, like, run your lights, so you just want to come down to, like, a regular, you know, or a heavy-duty extension cord, they make adapters for that. So... Online at Amazon or at the camper store, you can go through and see what the different options are, and you're going to make a selection based on... And you can have more than one, right? You, you can have whatever you want have, to make it work for what you need We have 50 to 30, 30 to, to 20, for. all the way down. So no matter where we are, we can have some kind of power. Right. So after you get your power hooked up, you're going to... And, and this is in no particular order, but these are just the things outside. So your power, you're also going to want to hook up your water. Um... Just need a water hose, right? That's it's just as simple as that. You need a water hose, but, but you need a, nowadays it's not just like went back in the day when we were younger. We used to take the water hose and drink out of the spigot. Not anymore. People don't do that anymore. We have there. There's thing called such thing it's as water water drinking hoses now. Right. So that way you don't get that that lovely plastic taste Ugh. that you used to get back in the day. Which those are great. I mean, it's hot and you're running hey, around in the summertime and you're drinking out of that thing. Storm. I didn't care how much plastic <laughs> it tastes. But now they have RV safe drinking water. Drinking hoses. water. They're for drinking water. That's what they're for. Most typically they're white, um, and they look like a regular garden hose, but they're white. So that's the cheapest route to go is to just get the the white. It'll say potable or the, some of the camper store. Um, the other option is they make like the is it zero, zero G, G hoses. hoses that you know collapse like they have garden hoses that way they also make them that are for drinking water. The one we currently have, we had that zero G for a long time and it lasted several years. Um, we swapped it out for the one we have now that is a rubber, so it's a thicker. I'm gonna say more resistant to punctures and holes. But it collapses down flat when the water's not in it. Um, and we have a hose reel that we, I think it's for an extension cord. No, it's for cord. an extension cord from Home Depot extension cord yeah. reel. And, but we use that for our water hose. Again, that's not something you have. That's more so a want. Just makes it easier, keeps the hose all in one place. And because that's collapsible, it fits into a smaller space. Now, our water connection is up near the front in our water bay. But sometimes the water spigot is all the way to the back. So we need to talk about the length of water hose. This could vary based on the length of your camper. We try to have enough water hose to go from the front to the back of our RV. So 50 foot. So 50 foot is going to be the, the water hose length that we can buy that does that. Now, do you want a 50 foot hose that every time you hook up to water, you've got to wrestle 50 foot of hose? Or do you rather have 225s? Because maybe it's right there and you don't need 50 foot of hose. I would say 75% of the time, a 25 foot hose is going to be what you need. But with ours all the way up front, and we have seen spigots all the way in the back, just get you double, double 25 or your water so might be, be safe. Your water might be in the back and the spigots all the way up front. You just never know. Um, all campgrounds are not set up the same. Especially old campgrounds. You also may or may not need a water filter. We have had RVs that the water filter was built in. You still need to buy the little cartridges to replace, but the actual water filter itself was built in. Or you may have no water filter at all. And these, you can buy a cheap one. You can spend hundreds of dollars. Um, they make little inline water filters. What you want to pay attention to is the 
particles. The particles, per... yeah, the micros and all that. We, we don't even use that. that, that so that, if you're going to be drinking your water, deep. pay attention to what those are. Buy the appropriate filter to filter out all the stuff. And like I'm saying, they're anywhere from 15 bucks. I think, probably the inline cheap one. Up to ones that Three, not only hours. filter, but they have water softeners built in and all the things, and it's the cleanest water ever. So, so at least start with just a little canister just to get you some right. some cleaner water through there. But I still wouldn't drink that water. But and that's going to depend on you and what you plan to do with your water. If you're not going to drink it, or if you're going to have like a Berkey, some fancy water filtration system, and you just need the water to come in, not so much an issue. Then you can you can do it however you want. So before you hook up that water. Mm -hmm you'll want a water pressure regulator because right. there is some campgrounds, believe it or not, that have beautiful water Amazing pressure. Water and pressure. those are the days I really, really like because now I can take that nice, hot, long princess shower. I get water pressure like I have at my house. But too much could can be Can blow all too. the PEX lines and all your lines. So you want to make 100% sure you're getting the correct amount of water pressure inside the camper and not getting 120 pounds because right. um, it will blow everything. So... Look for a good water <laughs> water pressure regulator valve. Hook it up. That way you're safe. But another pro tip here, even though you do have that water pressure regulator on there and it's knocking you down to 15, 60 PSI, wherever, you, wherever it's nice, if you leave that camper for the right. day, we, we do it even if we leave for a couple hours. I'm just gonna, We're just going to the pool. We're just walking. We won't. But if you're leaving for the whole we're day, leaving the park. we cut that water off. Because you just never know when one of those lines bust and you come back and you have a flood. And like literally we've seen there was a ladies camper at the campground that had water running out Hours. the door. because She was gone for the afternoon out kayaking somewhere and came back. We turned the water off, but then when she came back, she still had all the water to deal with, the clean up, the dry out. It was a disaster. So if you're going to be gone for any length of time, just go ahead and turn the water That's off. That's a pro tip, know. guys. That's a free tip. <laughs> <laughs> um, then... So that's your water in, but then you also have to have a way for water out. So you're going to need sewer hoses. Again, we do the same thing. We try to have at least the length of the camper because you never know where your connection is going to be. Um, I will tell you about sewer hoses. Sometimes we have noticed that sewer our sewer connections are sometimes not on the non-camp side. Sometimes they're on your camp the side, right, on, yeah, camp right, side. On, right underneath your picnic table and all that. So... I would suggest you have a little bit longer sewer hoses than you have regular water hoses. Because we were at one place, we had to let somebody borrow one of our hoses, and because we were the using the sewer connection was way. Yeah, we were using way four of them behind the campsite. So when you're when you're talking about your sewer connection, there's two other things you need to think about. First of all, before you hook up that sewer hose, you might want to get one of those Valterra Valterra uh, cutoff valves right for the end of that. Um, where it plugs in. Where it plugs camera. in. And the reason I know this 100% fact is, first of all, we've had so many campers and none of the valves completely shut off all the way. So we went you to... You might a, get lucky. They won't last. But you might not. We went to a uh, state park and I'm in my flip-flops and I bust open that thing to put my hose on there and nothing but water came out. It wasn't water. It was water. But it was nasty water. Was so water. after that day, I learned that that valve was there. I can put that valve on it. And I can hook, open up the cap, put my hose on, and when I'm ready to go, I can open the, sh the valve on the end, which opens and shuts every single time. And so we leave that attached to our camper. So, like, if you look at the sewer connector on your camper, it's just got this little cap on it. We put this Valterra valve on and then put the cap on that. So when if you I take see, that camp off, I mean that cap off, nothing's coming out until you put it If I see out. you in the campground without one of those, I'm going to tell you, you better buy I don't care what else you buy in that camper. He you better buy one of those. a happy camper. No, I wasn't happy at all that day. all that nonsense came out. And it was just enough that was from like, from that cap. So it wasn't like the whole tank. No, but it but was like enough. That, that tube from the bottom of your tank all the way down holds liquid so if your black tank is say leaking it's filling that whole pipe and when you open it there you go so um, while you're in there getting that valve you need to make see how many some people have two um sewer connections two, on two the sewer RV. connections we had one that had one in the front one in the back so if you have that you need to order two of those valterra cut off so you'll have that but while you're doing that it's easier to you they have a y kit for right. your sewer hoses. So it comes off of off of this one, off of this one, and it comes into a Y, and then one hose goes into your 
your sewer outside. So if you have two endpoints or whatever you want to call them, make sure you have enough the little hoses to get them together, get to Y, and then this brings us to the next piece. Well, and you don't have to have a Y, right? You can connect to one who's and then gonna, connect to the that? other. By the but y. if but if you have like a lot of the times you have that second sewer connection because you have a second bathroom. Maybe you have a bunk room with the bathroom back there. That means every time you need to dump that tank, you've got to disconnect and reconnect. I'm so the Y that. is going to be easier. But if you're trying to save money and you're just trying to get out there and you don't want to spend the extra money on that right away, you can always go back and add the Y later. So just need to, one just thing. To spend a little you're bit of money you're gonna probably want the Y. But 99.99999 campgrounds require you have a turn, whatever you want to call it, to go into the sewer. Like you from can't, your sewer pipe into You can't just dimension. hold the end of your sewer a hose and, and put it in the thing. I don't think it anybody has to, wants to. It has anything. to have a connection on there. So the one we have now just screws in pretty tight because a lot of the campgrounds have threads on the inside and you screw this on there and you put your cat, you put your hose up to it. So that's a must. you got to have that. They, some campgrounds will not allow you to yeah, have it unless there's some sure. kind of seal, some kind of rubber gasket, kind of something that goes down and turns into now, the sewer tank. Now, when you buy your sewer hoses, a lot of times you can buy a kit. Mm -hmm. So you're getting the hose and that end piece that goes into their sewer connection at the campground. I'm saying that because you only need one of those even if you need to buy extra hoses. So when you're buying, you're going to probably want to buy a kit. And then if you need extra pieces of hose or that Y, when you buy those extra hoses, make sure you're just buying the extra hoses and not that end piece as well because you don't necessarily need a second one of those. That's so correct. something to keep in mind when you're... But yeah, I would suggest you get that, that shutoff valve. 100% get that shutoff valve first. You'll thank me later. And don't forget the gloves. Yes. We're not going to use those same gloves that you're using to change the tire because those gloves will absorb moisture, and we don't want to absorb black tank moisture because that's gross. So, so we you're going to want to use like we have neoprene. Our, or, yeah, we have our rubber gloves in the back with all of our sewer stuff, and then we have our, um, our, our leather gloves up front. But here... Here's the thing a lot of people don't do. You want to make sure when you put your rubber gloves on that you're doing it in the right order. There's nothing worse than the first thing you do, you put your rubber gloves on, you go hook up your sewer, get it all in, get it all pretty, get all your Ys together, put it down in the thing, and then you go hook up your power and all that sewer nastiness now is going down your power. Everything. Oh, and then I got to hook up my water, water. With, my, um, with my filters and all that, and you're tightening all that after all that stuff spilled on your hands. So make sure you do a routine. I always try to do my water first because that's the cleanest thing with my gloves on because I already got my gloves. Brand new gloves. So, oh yeah, please. Brand new. Water so first. I'll do my water, then I'll do my electricity, and then I'll do my sewer. When you're done for the end of the day. Throw them away. You throw them away, you get rid of them. But I'm talking about the end of your trip. You come back, you unhook your water, you unhook your power, and then you unhook your sewer and then you take your gloves off and you fold them well, up. Well, and no and worries. Those gloves are cheap enough. If you realize you're doing it in the wrong order and you've touched the nasty sewer stuff and now you're getting ready to touch something that you don't really want to touch with those gloves, just take them off and throw them away and get another pair. It's not going to be the end of the world. You're, you're going to be fine. So make sure you have two sets of gloves. You have rubber gloves for your for your sewer and all that, and you have your, your leather, leather gloves, gloves, or for, work gloves for, for working on something on the road if something happens. And then... This last one is something that we probably should have said a few steps back when we were back in the leveling process. Wheel chocks. You're going to need wheel chocks just to make sure you're not rolling around. Um, most campsites aren't so unlevel. Mm -hmm. And, like, we have six-point auto level, so we've got a lot of stuff there holding us. I will tell you, there, there has been times I have six wheel chocks. I have put six wheel chocks where we were because I was afraid... Something was going to jump over top of her. Oh, something just, was going to you know, move, it's so. a safety thing. You don't want it to roll. You don't want it to roll because you don't want it to roll away. You don't want it to roll and roll into something or roll into or over somebody. So, or off of a chocks, cliff like where we were before. Wheel chocks. When she had me backed up to the edge of that cliff, <laughs> I had chocks all the way around that thing. I was even finding rocks to put underneath it. It all wasn't that, kind of that bad, but it, it's a safety thing. So you're going to want wheel chocks, and I think the last need. I might change my mind, but that I can think of for outside stuff is going to be if, again, this doesn't pertain to everybody, if you have a generator on board, 
and not just toy haulers. Some of a lot of the bigger fifth wheels have generators on board. You're going to need to know how to fill your fuel tank for that generator, where you fill it, how it works, that kind of thing, and be sure that you have fuel in it because if you need to use that generator, it's not going to work without fuel. And I say fuel because some work on diesel, some work on gasoline, some even work on propane. So whatever fuels your generator, be sure that you have that fuel on board. So now we finally got everything we think you need on the outside. Let's talk about inside. Oh, we got to go all the way inside now. Let's talk about important stuff like eating. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to need to stock your kitchen. And that sounds simple enough. Depending on how you cook, you may need pots and pans. They don't have to be the latest, greatest, fanciest pots and pans. You can go to Walmart or Target and buy a cheap set. Um, unless you're full-time, then you might want to invest in the nice ones. But if it's just for the weekend, go ahead and get the cheap ones. Um, I think I have the cheap ones because pots and pans come and go. Um, plates, bowls, serving bowls, plates, Maybe you just want paper plates, and that's fine. Silverware, that's what you plastic want. Wear, napkins, Silverware, right? Paper do you towels. want do you want metal? Do you want plastic? Do you care? You know, get what you want: paper towels, napkins. I will say, I prefer paper towels so that I can take them outside because napkins blow away if you take them outside. Um, dish cloths, dish towels, pot holders. All the things, like all the things in your kitchen that you use, spices, and you don't need your whole spice cabinet from home unless it's going to be your home, but you're going to need, you know, salt and pepper. At the bare minimum, most people want that, you know, if, if you have other seasonings, sauces, ketchups, mustards, mayonnaise, that well, Remember, kind of guys, thing. this is kind of like a second house, so whatever you have in your house, you'll you're, want, you're you'll want, want something similar to that in your RV. Um, and maybe you even want a caddy to take outside, or maybe you have an outside kitchen. A little caddy that's going to have, like, the paper plates and the plastic silverware, that kind of thing. Um, and don't forget the can opener. And and I know that a can opener sounds A can opener silly. and a wine bottle opener, because a lot of people well, want that wine bottle Well, you know, opener. we had <laughs> our camper, one of our first campers, and we thought we had it all stocked up, and I brought food. Didn't think a thing about it. I got ready to open a can of, like, green beans or something, and realized we didn't have a can opener. So I was gnawing on it to get it open. No, it was not. I, I went next door and said, by any chance, do you have a can opener? But it's just little things like that It'd you don't think about. Pecan. And like small appliances. Do you use a toaster every day? Okay, then just go buy a cheap toaster. Can you not live without your coffee pot or your crock pot? All of these things. Sure, you can use the one from in the house. And maybe at first, because you've spent the money on the RV, you want to wait a little bit before you start investing in ones for the camper. We used but, to do that every weekend. Every Sunday we yeah. came back, we were carrying everything back in. And then every Thursday or Friday, we were carrying everything back out. And she had this big, long list because at the time, that's all we can afford, guys. We couldn't we couldn't have multiple things. So if we had it in the house, we took it outside. We had it in out. We brought it back and, and forth, hey, back and forth. Ask for it as a Christmas or birthday gift. Hey, you know what I really want? I want a toaster for the camper. Or, I want a crock pot for the Or you got a camper. brand new camper so you can have housewarming gifts. Yeah, we did have people do that for us when we got one of our campers. But bottom so, line is whatever's in your house that you use every single day, if you're going to use it and in your camper, And you don't need everything. No, don't, but don't, you're going to need don't bring the things everything. that you use on a regular. You're going to, you know, I'm going to need my coffee pot. That's what I'm going to need. But if you're the person that's not really going to cook a lot in the camper, maybe you're the people that cook over the fire. Then you're going to need like your Dutch oven or the long tongs that you use. Or a lot of the camper stores sell like that steak that then has the grate that hangs over the, um, the over fire. the campfire. And you're going to cook over that. Whatever utensils you will need for the way you plan to live. And of course, if you're going to be a fire person, you're going to need like the forks for the marshmallows. Or maybe the hot dogs, that kind of thing. You're, you're going to need all those things. But don't go overboard, but don't get stuck out there and be like, so here, we here's, have here's a way to another, heat up some Here's water. another pro tip, guys. You need to find out how much you can carry on a camper, too, because ours can only carry 3,000 pounds. So once you start loading everything you think you need every single day, you're overweight. So be careful of that, and that's a whole other well, video. Well, I think about like road, paper but... plates or even like the reusable plastic plates that they're, I mean, they're really cheap at like Walmart and Target right now. You know, those are going to weigh less than like your heavy plates like you use in your house. So keep all of that in mind when you're purchasing all of those things and just bring what you use on a regular. Um, as we're talking about things that you're going to use on a regular, toiletries. 
So deodorant, toothpaste, If you want to be regular, you're going to need this on a regular. <laughs> deodorant, toothbrushes, toothpaste, things like that that you can keep a set in the house and then keep a set in the camper. Just go ahead, spend a couple dollars, and, and get a set for everybody that's going to be with you on every camping trip. Um, our kids that don't even come with us all the time in the back bathroom, they all have their own toothbrushes and stuff back there. Um, shampoo, hair dryer, things like that, that you may or may not need. Only, you know, what you will need. Like how, you know, like if you don't ever use a hair dryer, then you don't need to pack. One. I don't use a hair dryer. Right. And I use one, not all the time, but so I bring a hair dryer, but, um, those things that you're going to need while we're in the bathroom, let's talk about toilet paper. Mm -hmm. So. In all reality, guys, controversial subject right here. You don't have to use RV toilet paper. Our opinion. Uh, yes, again. Our so non-professional opinion. The best thing to do is, is you can do one of those little jar tests. You can kind of put water in it, put toilet paper in it, shake it around a little bit, see if it starts decomposing. If it decomposes, it's good to go. Um, I'm just going to say I buy the Members Mark brand at Sam's Club. It's what I buy at home. It's what I buy in the camper. And knock on wood. Never had a problem. We've been camping for 17 years now. That's what I've used. I've never bought a package of RV toilet paper. And we're going to go out while we're on the toilets. We're going to talk about the, and this is just quick because this is going to be another video, but the tablets. Everybody wants to put these tablets in their drains too. You don't need them. You don't need them. First of all, <laughs> think about it. You're here for the weekend. You get here Friday night. You leave Sunday morning. You drop that tablet in there. It's not going to do anything in three to four days. Well, it's and just, you don't really want not. it to. So... It, again, we'll try to do it quick. Your RV, the tanks in your RV are not a septic They're system. They're holding tanks. They are holding tanks, and they are holding the waste. And when you get ready to leave, you're going to wash the waste out. You don't need it to break down. I mean, certain solids are going to break down anyway, but the other things are going to run right out. So what I will say about that, and then we'll be done with it, is water, water, water. Unless you're boondocking... And you water really need fight. to conserve water. Use water. If you're at the campground and you have to dump your tank while you're there, no dump worries. It. They're not charging you anything extra. Dump it. But use water because the more water you use, the easier it is for things to wash out. And that's what you need to focus on. You don't need to focus on it breaking down. It's not a septic system. It is a holding tank. More to come. Also in the bathroom, towels. You're going to need towels, washcloths, or uh, loofahs or whatever you use. None of my business. You do you, but whatever you <laughs> Don't use forget your, bathroom, your towels. When you take a shower, you reach towels. out and it's not there. So. And I'm going to go ahead and recommend some sort of rug for in the bathroom, be it a bath mat or a rug, because water and RVs do not mix. You don't want yourself or kids getting out of the shower with water running all over you to be on the floor and running into places you don't want water. So get some sort of little bath mat rug, whatever it is, to put just outside of the shower to try to prevent water from now, sneaking so in. So now we're talking about rugs. Be. These are some of the things that you don't have to have, but it's some things that might be a good thing to have in rugs. You're not hearing this from me. Well, let's talk about rugs inside. Go ahead and get one for right inside the door. Okay. He's okay with that one to help drop off any rug, any rocks or dirt or the whatever. Rug the rug outside is a pain in the butt. So now we're moving from needs to wants, and yes. we're back outside. So she loves to put the rug down outside. And okay, I, but you and could I know just why. get a little one at the bottom of the steps. Stop. But I know, but we don't. We have this great big. We have a big one. We have two of them that let go the whole left of camper, and I get it. I understand. It stops dirt and trash and stuff from coming inside, where you can get into the floor, get underneath the slides. When you bring a slide in, you bring a rock in. I get it. But they're a big pain in the butt. You put the thing down. You got to hammer those stakes in the ground. Sometimes you hammer them stakes in the ground. And then it rains, and you're trying to fold them up when you're leaving in the rain, and or they're, they're nasty. muddy. I, I get why he doesn't like it them. It seems like it rains every day we're packing up. But they do help keep down the amount of dirt that comes in on people's shoes. She is right. And dirt is one thing. You can sweep that up. Rocks are another. And if you get even the smallest rock inside, and it gets accidentally kicked under one of your slides and you go to bring your slide in, it can rip the linoleum. And, and what stinks, most time you don't, you don't pay attention to that because most time you bring your slides in, the lights are off, you're in a hurry to leave. And you, you bring them in, And you get back out to where you're going, you open that slide up and there's that big rip. So I understand why she likes the the, the rugs outside and I do and it because I know And especially if you've helps. got little people that don't maybe wipe their feet off really good on the small rug or at older the bottom people. of the steps. Or 
older people that just don't do it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's an outside want slash need depending on how you live so if the rv also that you bought doesn't have an outside grill an outside blackstone or whatever brand you want to call it you may want to carry one of those um, some campgrounds have a fire ring with a little grill on top of them right. some of them do have grills so if you're one of those people that got to cook outside because you're here you friday Saturday, sunday you love a grill you love the blackstone you love this you love that you're going to need to find one of those to carry with them. and they make them right they make small ones um that are perfect for rvs that'll fit in just about any storage area that you've got they and make them they from make, this big all the way yeah, to that big and, and if they you've make, got a big underbelly they make them big enough you can put them in there but remember you're gonna have to get it out and put it away so the bigger it is the heavier it is and maybe you have help, maybe you don't. So keep that in mind. They make a lot of tabletop versions that you can just sit on a picnic table, which leads me to picnic tables. Look at that. I didn't even try to do that, and it worked. Um, I'm going to recommend a tablecloth. Again, you don't have to have one. Not which, a need. once again, I can't stand putting that tablecloth on because it's got to go on. you got to stretch it, put it on the ends. Or she has those tablecloths that come over the ends, and then the wind blows, so she puts little little things on there. But, but when you're out there and you're watching your neighbor pack up and they have their sewer hoses on the picnic table. We've seen it, guys. And they're we've rinsing them out. Or their dog is sitting on the Laying picnic table. Laying on the picnic table. We love dogs. We, are, we have yeah, yeah, dogs. Yeah, yeah. I love my dogs. I'm not opposed to dogs. But sewer hoses or their gloves where they just hooked up or disconnected I've their sewer. I've seen trash bags on top on of them. Laying on the picnic table. I want to pick. I want. I want a tablecloth because I don't want to eat off of that. And and most of the picnic tables at parks are wooden, so it's not like you can spray them and wipe, wash them off. Not happening. You're not washing it off. It's wood. It's in there. So just go ahead, invest in a cheap, reusable, or a throwaway. Invest in a tablecloth of some sort. Put it on there again. Not a not a need, but. And it's don't forget, you're going to probably it. want some camping chairs because you're not going to sit at that picnic table the whole time. That's kind of not comfortable. So they have all kinds of camping chairs. You may already have camping, what we consider camping I chairs. Mean, but ballpark they're, chairs. They're ballpark like chairs. We used to watch yeah. the boys play ball or whatever it is. You put them in a little sleeve and you carry them over your shoulder and you go. They make them from that now all the way up to these oh, dear big... God. They make Dual collapsible ones. rocking chairs yes. and stuff now. It's it's insane. So these aren't these aren't needs because you probably already have some kind of charity you can sit out there. But well, that's or something you could you may sit want. at the picnic table if you wanted to. Yeah, that's uncomfortable. But that's that's going to get old. You're going to want some chairs, even even if they're just cheap chairs. Uh, and also, we were talking about the if you like to cook over the campfire, even if you don't cook over the campfire, we don't do that often. We still will have a campfire from time to time, and. Who doesn't love a good roasted marshmallow? So if you have like the roasting sticks, I he's a weirdo. That. You're going to want the little roasting sticks to heat some marshmallows or hot dogs or whatever. So Or a doughboy. So if you guys have never had a doughboy, I'm not even going to tell you what they are here. You got to comment just below and just that there. Just ask us comment. Do you say, prefer a s'more or, or a doughboy dough or do you not even I'm going to tell you is? most of the times she she brings out the doughboy sticks and we make doughboys. People dough boys. like them. People say these are so much better than s'more. So if you know what a doughboy is, let us know. If you don't, let us know. We might we might give you a little little a little email back and tell you how to make them, or you may just have to come on our campouts to see what a doughboy is because we make doughboys almost at every campout. You know something else I didn't think about. A lot of people will put out we we don't, so that's why it didn't really occur to me. I don't know why it just popped in, but like the little tiki torches. Sometimes people put those in their campsites, or people work. will hang the outside lights and they'll hang them from their awnings. And I'm going to go ahead and say this: most awnings have lights either on the awning or up against the RV. And hanging those decorative lights looks really cool. It's a softer light. I love the light, the look of it. But if you've got a storm coming up and you need to get that awning in, the last thing, it, and this is from experience, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to climb up and unhook all those lights so that you can run your awning in so that the storm doesn't take it away. And yes, so, we know you can put those little things down to the, to the ground to right. anchor them. But I'm going to tell you what, I don't care what you say, I've seen them ripped out of the ground. So out you of the get ground, into a, or they stay in the ground and it rips off the side of your camper. So, you get into a 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour wind gust yeah. for a, from a summer storm out west or something. That thing's not holding. But I'm down. just saying, if you if you want the outside lights anyway, or maybe you're just going to hang them from like your awning arm or something. Those, again, are a want, not necessarily a need, just something to think about. In case you want to decorate. So now we need to come back. back. Now we got most of that stuff outside. You're decorating your site, whatever you need. Now we got to come back inside because now we're tired. 
we're tired from being outside all day long. Maybe. Now it's time to come inside. <laughs> I see it, what you did there. And you may not, you, in your bed, this isn't a want because every, every camper is going to come with a mattress. A mattress. Or okay. maybe a mattress. Well, but you know what? We had our first fifth wheel that we bought had a nice mattress. It was a comfortable mattress and we didn't replace it. We loved it. But that was a one-time gig. Any other camper we've had, we've wanted to replace the mattress. So you don't have to replace the mattress. And and by mattress, I mean the one in our bedroom. But also like the mattresses in bunks, they're they're the, like this thick guys. They're not a lot. The and for a small child, not a big deal for a small kid, right? That that's fine. But you start getting a, a bigger kid and it's uncomfortable. Uh, depending on how often you're going, they're they're gonna love or not love it so much. So, so it's this is a need, it's not a want. You may want to look for you uh, getting a nice thick mattress like what you have at home. So ours Well, and if you have a standard a standard size queen or a standard size king or a twin or a full whatever you've got, you can go anywhere and get, you know, a bed in a box or whatever. But a lot of RVs have a RV king, which typically means it's a little shorter, an RV queen, which I think it's just a couple inches narrower. You may not be able to just run out to the big box store and grab a mattress to fit because it may not fit. So we have mattresses that are RV mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. And they make home mattresses, but they also make mattresses for RVs in specific RV sizes. And I mean everything from like a just a foam, like a memory foam mattress up to... Ours has the coils and, and a cooling, cooling gels gel. on top of them. Um, and it's very comfortable. They also make them in bunk sizes. So you and know, these all come instead of all... a little bitty mattress like they have in a bunk, they're like more like a, I, I guess think of it as instead of like a bunk mattress, more like a crib mattress, right? It's not going to be a 18 inch mattress for a bunk. And these come in a box. They're shipped to you in a box and you open them up and they get, they expand, they expand. and they do it. So we have one on our front bu- on our front bed. And we have one in our Happy Jacks in the back. So no so matter where are, we're sleeping, if we're in the back sleeping, it's the same sleep as we have in the front. Those aren't needs. No. But maybe something you want. And depending on, like, if you have a bad back, it may turn into more of a need. But what you will need... Is sheets. Is sheets. And or blankets. Because I don't think they comforters. come with any sheets. I think they just come with they this come cheap with little comforter crazy, on top. They call it a comforter and some cheap pillows. <laughs> um... And I don't think the bunks, the bunks just have the mattress. I don't think they even come with pillows. So even if you're going to be really simple and just those sleeping bags and the kids' bunks and a pillow, you're, you're going to need to think about having those or at least bringing them out of the house into the RV. Um, I will make a suggestion when we had bunks. You can spend a lot of money on expensive sheets that are made specifically for the size of your bunk. And that's if you can find them. Or what we found that worked really well was they make sheets out of like um, t-shirt material. They're called t-shirt sheets or jersey knit sheets. And I would buy the twin size for the smaller bunks. And because they're that stretchy material, they would just fall down under. And then if it was like a bigger bunk, even a full size with a thin bunk mattress, I would still buy the twin size because it would stretch enough that it would fit. So that's a pro tip. That's something I learned the hard way after fighting many years trying to find sheets but that fit a bunk. But we found something even better than all of those after fighting and arguing who's going to make the bed and who's going to do this and who's going to do that. Now I would say 60, 70% of the time I make the bed. Because we have a Betty's. And if you don't know what a Betty's is, it's B-E-D-D-Y apostrophe S. I'm pretty good at spelling. But it means bed E's, like E-A-S-E, because it's easy to make your bed. Um, in I, RVs, even in our bedroom, and it's a decent-sized bedroom for an RV, it's still tight beside the bed, and you're trying to reach out into that slide to hook the fitted sheet on, and then you're trying to reach up to put the sheet up, and then you're trying to put the comforter up, and in the morning, the comforter's on the floor, and you've got to start all over again. The Betty, think of it, and we have a video about just that, um, Think of a fitted sheet meets your comforter. So it's all one thing. You put it on the bed as if it's a fitted sheet, 
but it combines your fitted sheet, your um, comforter, blanket. It's all one thing, and it zips together. So no more comforter laying in the floor. It's attached. I will link that video up there I so you guys can see I could go on for hours it, about so. it, but it's something worth checking out. Again, it's not a need, but... Oh, it's a need. That one's yeah. a need, I think. We have them on both beds in the RV. We have them on the all the beds except for one at home. Um, they just make it so much easier. And then you don't have to fight with sheets and blankets and, and all the things. even me will make the bed. Yes. So that, that might be a need for some of you guys. Yeah. You don't, I mean, you know, it's, it's not going to be a need for everybody once, now that we've had it, it's a need for us. And I wasn't sure at first that I was going to like it. So we got it and, and we love it. Um, yeah. So there's a so whole once you, video So once you that. finally go to bed and you wake up the next morning, you get back down here and you go, man, I need to decorate this camper because it looks like an RV. It looks like a camper. So there's all kinds of different things. And these are just needs again. Um, you start putting your decorations up and you're wondering, how's this decoration going to stay here? I don't want to put a screw in a wall. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. So Lisa has found out there is museum putty. There's double-sided tape, which is... So they call it's nano tape, I think is what it's referred to. I used to think it was alien tape, but I think that's a brand name. It's kind of thick, double sticky, removable, but yeah, you it's, have you have to, it's not going to fall off the wall. So 99% of the things we have on the walls stuff here. are the only thing I don't have put up either on a command strip with museum putty or with nano tape is my coat rack because the weight of the coats will pull it down. Everything else is one of those three. So go ahead and check out what you want. Even like my broom and mop holder, like all of that stuff. Like is we said, all these things are going to be in the link in our Amazon store right. down the bottom. So you don't have to go searching. For and it. then like things that sit, our coffee pot has like a rubber mat under it and it stays put even when we travel. Um, just, just look around. Don't, Make it your own, right? It's your camper, and they're pretty It's just generic. like your house. And you, when you move into your house, most people don't leave it just like it is when the day you bought it. No. You end up changing it. And, so. and they're, 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 I think they've, they've pretty much gone across the board where they make it very neutral and somewhat generic so that you can make it your own. And like you can paint the walls if you want to. You can do whatever you want. There's processes for all that stuff. But at the very least, you can hang things on the wall, whether it be a little key rack, a coat rack, a picture whatever, and museum putty, command strips, and nano tape make it so that we don't take many things down during travel. We leave them sitting where they are, and they stay put. So we are really hoping you guys are enjoying these this series, even if you're a newbie, even if you're experienced, because like I said before, we're still learning things every single oh, day. Sure. We didn't know about nano tape. We no. didn't know about this. We didn't know about that until other RVers throughout, the, throughout our RV experience. So we don't. We're not trying to build this just for the for the newbie RVers. It's just for for us to kind of show you guys how they are. So if you're liking these videos, please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you give us the thumbs up. And make sure you ring that bell. So when we release this next video, which this next video is going to be, how we hook and unhook the RV when we get to the when campsite, we get to the campsite. When we're leaving so a campsite. Once again, this is how we do mm -hmm. it. There's people do it totally different ways. We work together on hooking and unhooking. Some people I've seen it many, many times. The husband, the wife, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, whatever, stay inside the truck while the driver the hooks everything up. So we have learned to do this and we've done it. We we actually do it for two reasons. We well, do it to make it well, we do it to make it easier for each of us and we also do it for safety because we want two sets of eyes on every single thing when we're out here driving. So Well, and whatever your process is, it's going to be your process. So like you just need to nail down your process. If I do want to ask a quick question though, if if you are out there and you're newbie or not, I was thinking more so not a newbie and you have a suggestion for something that we didn't even think about or if we talked about a need or a want and you have an opinion about that, be it that we're wrong and you have a better way or, or something like that, please drop it in the comments because, like he said, even even an experienced RVer can learn something from somebody else once in a while. So if you've got a tip that would help us do something differently, maybe a better way, please drop it below for us and for anybody else watching the video. I know what I need. Mm -hmm. I need to stop this video now and we need to get outside and we need to enjoy the camping weather we're camping this week we're guys. actually camping so 
Hopefully these are helping you guys. <laughs> if they are, like I said, give us those thumbs up. Let everybody know. Share these posts. We really want you to share them to help you other RVers. Yeah, um, we're not selling anything, so feel free to like sell it. Sell it. We're not selling anything, so feel free to share it. Like on a, if there's if you're on a camper for newbies page or something somewhere, and you think it would be helpful, you know, please share it so that somebody else might learn either from us or from our mistakes. But if you guys see us outside, make sure you wave. Make sure you say hi. I'd love for you to even say, hey, I saw your, your series over there and it's really helped us. But until I do get to see that stuff and see you guys wave and say hi. Safe travels, y'all.